influence you can have on the institute and the kind of influence the institute can have on you they are very strong so you can whatever you do makes a big difference to the institute and the, whatever institute undergoes has a big impact on you subscribe to our youtube channel and don't forget to press the bell icon to get all the latest updates hi everyone my name is anita sharma and i welcome you all at ekpotha media once again it's uh, recently i visited iit hyderabad and today we have professor ganesh uh, from iit hyderabad professor ganesh welcome you at ekpotha media thank you so much for accepting our request thank you dr anita i'm happy that uh, you know i'm here in front of you and be able to have some discussion thank you you professor ganesh i was uh, you know i i was superbly impressed by uh, you when i met you this time and um, uh, we have been interacting with each other you know for quite a some long time now uh, so i saw your profile you have done your phd from iit bombay and then you moved to iim iit hyderabad um, hyderabad before iit hyderabad you were at iit madras i'm very much inspired by your journey so i really need to know like what is your journey uh, why you chose phd as a career and then you moved to iit iit madras and then iit hyderabad so tell me about your journey sir so it's a very long journey um i was a, a computer science student during my 11th and 12th and uh, i i was inspired by my school counselor and i wanted to choose psychology as my career so i i did my ba in psychology msc in psychology uh, there were two options in front of me one to become a pra- practic- practitioner or a counselor or teach psychology so i chose the second one because uh, teaching psychology also uh, can involve practicing psychology as a counselor Uh, so the next step uh, uh, in after msc was doing mphil and phd and ahead so that is one reason why i did phd uh, so when i when i was looking for phd opportunities uh, i came to know that uh, iits uh, also have their humanities and social sciences departments which uh, offer phd program in uh, psychology and social sciences like psychology so which uh, which motivated me to do my phd from iit bombay Uh, and then uh, when i was looking for job opportunities i worked in uh, corporate for a very short time i worked in raymond for a very short time as a manager so and then i understood you know i am very good in preaching rather than practicing so i became uh, i want to get into teaching uh, iit madras is where i joined uh, as my first uh, teaching job because of personal reasons i have to move to iit hyderabad Uh, so after some point uh, i shifted to iit hyderabad so that's the journey yeah. okay so are you enjoying this phase so you were uh, the hod of uh, the department of entrepreneurship and management so uh, what's your like are you enjoying are you happy there uh, are you learning new things yeah i mean we 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 can't do things with, without enjoying them that's what i feel yeah i, I enjoy being here especially the shift from a larger iit to a new iit uh, well established iit to a new iit like iit hyderabad has its own merits and also has its own challenges um, especially uh, you know the kind of resources you get in uh, uh, established iit like iit madras is like enormous but at the same time the kind of opportunities you get in a smaller or a newer iit like iit hyderabad has its own value so this is like working in a startup versus working in a large established organization Mm. here in iit hyderabad uh, when i jo- i joined 5 years ago so iit hyderabad is around 14 years old so i joined 6 7 years ago mm-hmm. uh, so i can see a lot of growth happening during this time you know there's like a infancy stage where you know the child grows very fast mm-hmm. and uh, and you know the, the kind of influence you can have on the institute and the kind of influence the institute can have on you they are very strong so you can whatever you do makes a big difference to the institute and the, whatever the institute undergoes has a big impact on you <laughs> that, that's that's quite motivating to be in that kind of an organization yeah. uh, especially when you do certain things if that can make a difference to the institute you feel you know you have control and you can make a difference 
so that is something i really enjoy absolutely so you are like feeling proud of yourself today because you have contributed so much in the in this new iit so uh, because you also served as uh, the hod of uh, the department of entrepreneurship and management uh, you also handled uh, research domain so i happened to meet a few phd scholars this time when i visited iit hyderabad tell me uh, what those few steps you took to create that ecosystem in entrepreneurship and management at iit hyderabad a lot of people i'm sure are interested in listening to you because import hub is all about research because we talk about how institutes are you know contributing in making that kind of ecosystem wherein a candidates can uh, find a right mentor a right institute so please tell me about iit hyderabad hyderabad and your contribution in um, this department entrepreneurship and management i also want to know about uh, liberal arts department if you can throw light on these two departments so one personally even before talking about what i did as a hod i would like to talk a bit about uh, the advantage of doing phd in an iit kind of a setup especially in the areas of management and Uh, you know, social sciences because IITs are usually seen as engineering institutes, engineering science and technology, but they also have a very strong humanities and social sciences and management uh, faculty. Especially PSC in these areas, in a predominantly engineering institute like IIT, has a great uh, strength. You know, because uh, institute like IITs. gives you a lot of opportunities for interdisciplinary research you know for example let's say for social sciences and management doing your research from an iim if you are a, if you are a management scholar or doing your research in psychology in a university is very different from doing research in iits in management and humanities why because you get to see the relevance of these disciplines in the larger context in the context of technology in the context of uh, you know sciences in the context of social sciences so iit themselves are very lucrative for research in social sciences and management not just in science and technology so as a hod if i can convey this idea to the potential students research scholars that itself will motivate them i don't need to do anything specifically to make it more lucrative because the ecosystem itself the iit ecosystem itself is very lucrative for uh, researchers in social sciences and management you don't need to look for iims and top level universities that is one mm-hmm. so especially in my department the new department which uh, you know i was heading entrepreneurship and management since it's a new department for me the role of culture in nurturing research you know that that becomes very important so you know, whatever we set as a culture for research hmm. it will stay on forever hmm. so for me what is research uh, a phd level research is the freedom to explore or ask questions which you feel are relevant it's not the question asked by your guide or it's not the question which is asked by the institute it is your question you want to find answers so giving this space to allow scholars to ask whatever questions they want to ask that is a culture i wanted to create and that is a culture i believe will help good quality research mm. so as a hod that that's what i think i contributed you know i i contributed in creation of this culture of openness autonomy you know asking the right kind of questions mm-hmm. risk taking mm-hmm. so i mean at least that's what i wanted to do i think i sort of achieved it ha huh. and if you create this culture the first batch of students become your brand ambassadors absolutely when, when people come for phd for phd interviews they interact with seniors or even before they come they talk to their seniors and many a times it's word of mouth you know many a times you see that the kind of phd students who come are uh, from the same institute like the ones who are doing phd now you know it's like word of mouth it spreads around so to spread the word of mouth to create that brand image you need to create that kind of you know uh, culture or the meaning which people want to believe in you know so i think that is what we did or that is what we aim to do 
to encourage good quality research and attract good quality research students mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I have a very interesting question now. So I saw your research actually, and this research is uh, talking a lot uh, from um, OB side, psychology side. Uh, you have written a lot of papers, but your expertise uh, is something very interesting. Somebody told me that you are an expert in scale development. So, um, which paper is very close to your heart? Because of its uh, richness or um, its uh, contribution so what which paper do you think that is very close to your heart when it comes to a scale development paper there are many research so again scale development is not a unidimensional uh, expertise it involves a lot of things if you have to develop a scale you need to be very strong in fundamentals of psychology psychometry statistics research methods so if you have to pick one paper and you know understand everything about psychometry or scale development it is not uh, i mean it's not practical but one paper which is close to my heart is my own paper i mean that's because that's my paper not because it's a great paper so i i have my phd work involved uh, developing a scale for measuring virtualness so this is like some 15 years ago 15 16 years ago where uh, you know my in my study i try to understand Earlier, people were trying to understand the difference between virtual teams and face-to-face teams, co-located teams. My idea was there's nothing like for face-to-face and virtual teams. There is something called virtualness, which is there in all teams. Uh, so I developed a scale to measure virtualness, which was not, I mean, that was not a hot topic that time. But now many people are quoting this research because now, because of pandemic, people are working remotely. Mm-hmm. You know, there are, there are a lot of these... Uh, uh, working from home, the virtual virtual offices are there. So that scale, which I developed 15 years ago, has been now that paper has been quoted more recently. So I mean, again, the, my guide there in IIT Bombay allowed me to work on a topic which was not even you know hot or uh, re- relevant in terms of more people using it that time. But now people are using it. So yeah, I mean that paper would. Is something which I am really happy that I have worked on that research and developed that paper. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, um, I guess, uh, you know, one of the qualities of a researcher is that to identify a topic which may be relevant in the future, seeing, you know, if that, is, that kind of foresightedness is also needed. So, you had that foresightedness when you were uh, at IIT Bombay 15 years ago. Um, and you also worked on a very interesting topic. I saw a paper on mentoring. Okay, so because this online teaching, online career coaching, this mentoring is also evolving every day. Coaching is evolving every day. Uh, so your paper is, uh, you know, if I if I read that paper title, do mentors learn by mentoring others? Uh, so I'm sure that there must be some outcome of this paper. But I have a very critical question here. So if there was a situation, any critic, uh, like there was a situation or a critical situation where you thought that you also needed a mentor, uh, would you like to talk about that situation where you were also looking for a mentor in your life? Uh, incidentally, I'm also a certified coach. I undergo, I've undergone training to become a life coach. I'm also a practicing coach. So mentoring and coaching, they fall under this, uh, you know, broad area of helping relationship. We all need mentors at any given point in time. You know, uh, we need mentors. We need people to help us when, when we are in difficult situations. Personally, for me, you know, long back, this career choice of I will take, I will pursue psychology as my career is because of my mentor. I, we, like I said, I, I had a school psychologist. So she was my inspiration. She was my mentor. But generally, you know, we need mentors or I, I have understood the need for mentors when I, hit a, I, I, when I hit a roadblock, you know, when you feel that I cannot handle it or, you know, I need help. So you need a mentor. And especially if you have a mentor who's there with you lifelong, you know, something like a family doctor. So if you can find someone in your personal, professional, or both those areas, it, it can, you can, you'll, you'll be the luckiest person, you know, finding a right mentor who knows you in and out, both personally and professionally is, is a big advantage. So I, I'm lucky that I have a couple of such mentors. So whenever I 
I hit a roadblock whenever I feel helpless, so I go to them. More like a guru, you know. So not a spiritual guru. I mean, spiritual spiritual guru can also be your mentor, mm. but someone who can, someone who knows you professionally and personally. Mm-hmm. So that makes a huge difference. Mm-hmm. So I remember one of the mentoring incidences uh, from my PhD days. So you know. PhD is a lone journey. Like we all struggle with our own challenges, and sometimes we don't get right for people to help us. So one of my batchmates, um, right now she's a professor in one of the IIMs. Um, she she is by qualification a clinical psychologist as well. So what she told me was very interesting. That whenever you feel lonely, just remember one thing: to akeli akeli nahi hai. So there are so many people like you. who are struggling just seek you know community uh, build a community or be a part of some communities so that you can share feel the same kind of emotions and then you will eventually get out of that kind of feeling of loneliness if you find that kind of uh, community and camaraderie and you know uh, people around you so what a piece of advice actually helped me a lot to sail through my phd journey and i'm sure that researchers do need mentors researchers do need uh, coaches Uh, to sail through their uh, phd journeys and life uh, in the f- in future so um moving to the next part so this is a fun conversation we are going to have because this is a rapid fire round um so i'm going to ask you a couple of questions some small questions you can answer in one word or one statement one line okay so first question if not a scholar what would you have been i would have been a counselor okay <laughs> uh what's your early morning ritual or practice but i i prefer to have my coffee uh, coffee is a very important part of my early morning ritual yeah. okay a must have item on your office desk pen and paper uh not pen pencil and paper i prefer to use a lot of pencil and paper okay so hardcore engineering side actually reflects that when people use a lot of pencils it means they have an have an engineering mindset actually uh okay so moving to the next question what do you do when you feel stressed or overwhelmed i take a pause usually i uh, stop doing what i'm doing take some rest and then get back okay so what's your latest purchase to increase your productivity i got a laptop which is which has a touch screen and it makes a huge difference okay and your favorite books or book any fiction non fiction i usually read non fiction uh, the, there is this book which i was reading called human kind which mm-hmm. talks about uh, the goodness among people okay and my last question what's your favorite quotation that keeps you motivated this too shall pass i mean i, I don't know if it's a motivating quote but it helps you sail through difficulty this too shall pass more last one question actually Uh, what kind of researchers you are expecting at iit hyderabad three qualities which i see as important one fundamental should be strong you know you should have a good fundamental knowledge of your area two you should have a broader perspective of the world which means even though you are a specialist you should be able to see the larger picture so you should be a specialist and you should be a generalist third is perseverance you know especially in phd you should have this tendency to you know get up even if you fall you should be willing to fall and ready to get up okay nice nice thank you uh, lovely advice and i'm sure that those who are listening to your conversation uh, with a thought hub i am sure will able to understand if they have these three qualities iit hyderabad is a place for them right thank you so much sir thank you ma'am thanks for Uh, giving this opportunity to be heard by others thank you it's great to see you all here thank you for watching our work if you have not subscribed to impact of media then please hit the bell icon and subscribe to our channel and support research celebrations in india